Hello readers, I'm Amy and today I'm going to be talking about The Shuddering by Anya Alborn. This is, I believe, written by a Colorado author, but it also takes place in Colorado. I'm actually borrowing this from best friend Demi, who also has a channel here on booktube. This is a horror novel, it is extremely gory, and I have some thoughts. So let's get into it. So I was having coffee with Demi one day and we're talking about horror movies. If you know, if you don't know, I've recently gotten into horror movies a little bit more. I've kind of found some of my niches. I really love creature features. I love slashers. I particularly like more classic horror movies that aren't as freaky because they're not as well done as movies now due to technology and stuff. Just if they're, if they're not hyper-realistic like today's movies, I tend to enjoy them a little bit more unless they're creature features or slashers because I don't like to be too scared. And as we're discussing creature features, Demi's like, hey, you'll probably like The Shuddering. And the thing is, two years ago, I got this book for her for her birthday. She finally read it in this last year, and now I'm borrowing it, and I'm the one who gave it to her. And I just, I find that really funny. But this is a book that takes place in a secluded location, which is one of my favorite horror book tropes, one of my favorite horror tropes in general when you're in a place and you can't escape these adults, um, I wanted to say these teens because it's always teens, but they're adults. They're like, what, late 20s, early 30s? Um, some of them, two, two of them are twins and they're from a very, very rich family and their best friends and one of their friend's girlfriends are coming with them up to their father's cabin, which is being sold. So it's kind of a last hurrah for the group. They haven't seen each other that much lately. One of the twins is going to Switzerland, so they just want to hang out and spend some time together. This is a secluded cabin in the woods next to a ski resort. Um, the one who's going to Switzerland is actually going for snowboarding. He has this website dedicated to like snowboarding websites and stuff. Um, this big storm comes along, they have some fights, they can't really remove themselves from the cabin, and they notice some weird things going on. So not throughout the whole book, but for the first couple of chapters and for the last chapter, we open up the chapter with a character who is not one of our main characters, and for the most part they're not really characters that our main characters interact with. So for example at the beginning you have this man who's going out to chop firewood, he encounters the mysterious thing in the woods, um, later on you have this couple who's out snowboarding and they decide to take a detour. By the way, terrible idea! Don't take a detour when you're in the mountains snowboarding, or when you're in the mountains in general. If you don't know the area, don't take a detour. <laughs> just letting you know. But they take a detour, they discover this horrifying thing in the woods, and then we go back to our main characters. So I think the best way to describe the monsters, I, I feel like they're werewolves. This is unconfirmed, there is nothing really to lead me to believe that they're actually werewolves, but they're, they're described as very wolfish, they have very long teeth, they're gray and bony and I don't know that they're furry, I think it's more like skin, but they're also very humanoid, they're very large, so it just kind of sounds like a description you would get of a werewolf without us ever actually being led to believe that it's a werewolf. So it's werewolf-like. But I think my big critique of this book, I mean I, I actually loved this book for the first half, <laughs> and then we get to the second half, and it's not a bad book, it's very enjoyable, I enjoyed reading the entire thing, but my critique. I feel like, and I'm not a horror aficionado by any means, it's just what I've been noticing with some of the horror movies that I've been watching, the horror books I've been reading. Um, one trope that just never seems to go away is stupid character decisions. For example, if someone is almost dead and you only have three bullets left and there's a creature standing in front of you, but there's also a dozen more creatures in the woods, don't waste all of your bullets on that one creature that is trying to eat your friend who is dead anyways. Save your damn bullets, okay? Just saying. I'm not saying that's a spoiler. I'm just saying. <laughs> Stupid character decisions like that. And the women in this book, mm, it's a newer book, um, they're not bad. Like, they're very smart women. They, 
they're, they have their own lives, they're their own people, cool. But the twin sister gets extremely emotional throughout the book to the point where she is making very, very stupid decisions that I don't feel most people would would make. Like, it's like they have no sense of the real danger or they don't have... It just... I'll explain with a little snippet from the book. How about that? Um, there's characters in the house and the twin, the woman, um, can't find her brother. Now this is a huge house. She's only taken a glance around the room, but she doesn't see him. So she automatically goes to the door to go outside where the monsters are and she's crying and she's gonna unlock the door and run out into the snow to find him instead of checking the rest of the house. Why? That... Uh, they're stupid character decisions and then they're stupid character decisions where I'm like, girl, you can do better than that. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the women in this book deserved more as far as decisions made and emotional points. Like you can be emotional and a little bit scatterbrained without being that scatterbrained. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is just me doing that typical thing that viewers of horror do where you think that you could act better and maybe I wouldn't actually act any better. I don't know. But Besides, besides some of the stupid, de stupid decisions by characters, I actually did really enjoy this book. Um, it is very gory. There are no holds barred on all of the blood spl splatter and the neck tearing out. Like, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, as for the title of the shuddering, it's not really explained. Not that a lot of monsters are necessarily explained, but you can kind of see the location of the monsters from time to time because they're like bumping up or rubbing up against one or two trees in the forest and you just see the trees shuddering and that's kind of like their call. It's how you know that they're arriving. Um, so that is the title, but that's, that's kind of it for this one. This is a shorter book review. I had a little bit of a rant, but don't think I enjoyed this book because I did and I would actually like to read more like this, perhaps with smarter characters. <laughs> Maybe best friend Demi will have some recommendations since she's into the very gory, creepy books. So I will be looking to her for some more books along the lines of this to go ahead and check out. Please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye friends.